open up the recording and come back over here. And just tell me it's being recorded. Yes. We're we're getting ready to go live. Facebook. So here we go. Okay. Hi guys and welcome. My Hi. name is Joy Koff. Hi Kay. Hi Joy. <laughs> so this is um, uh, Miracles of Joy. My name's Joy Koff and we're hosting, this is an event that we host on Tuesday nights and it's called Metaphysical Chat. Uh, today my special guest is Kay Horn and we are going to be discussing about relationships. And what we're talking about when we talk about relationships is some of the, our most challenging relationships are those closest to us. So how to have those relationships that are closest to us. So Kay, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do in the metaphysical community and some of the classes and workshops that you offer. Okay, thanks Joy. I offer at fairs um, and on the internet now, um, soul paintings. They're abstract representations of your soul energy. They include a written channel message from my guides about your destiny, reason for being, any other information you may need to know. And um, it also includes a psychic reading. So during the painting, um, we can discuss anything you'd like and you can ask any questions that you'd like of my guides. So that's primarily what I offer. Um, I have, I also do uh, spiritual mentoring and life coaching. Um, and I am working on some new classes to offer. So I'm very excited about these new opportunities. So let's talk a little bit of some of the subject matter that we're going to cover today, because you and I talked about this and yeah. there have been some really difficult, I'm going to say difficult situations for people. So let's talk a little bit. One of the, uh, one of the subject matter that we're going to be covering is honoring soul to, um, soul choices of others yes we're going to cover holding space for your loved ones very important honoring your emotions during difficult times loss death and taking care of others yes and then the most important one that we'll talk about is taking care of yourself absolutely but so i want to get started with let's first talk about loss you know, different yeah. losses. And Kay, you have a story about that. And I think that your experience and where you came from is really, really important to kind of help people grasp that. So I'm going to let you tell your story. Thank you, Joy. Um, for me, the first loss that I had was the divorce of my parents when I was about 36. Um, and out of that loss, I learned how to uh, channel and to auto do automatic writing. So uh, the next great loss I had was that of, of my mother, and the year later of my husband, and two years after that of my grandson. So I'm really experienced with grieving and um, how to move forward in my life. It's not easy. It is doable though. It takes um, focused effort and intent and decisions to be well. So in my case, I had to decide to be well. I had to decide when I started dating again after my, I think four years after my husband passed, because I was married for 38 years, so I was clueless about how to be with somebody else. Um, I, my <laughs> guides gave me a release that I would say to prepare myself. So I do a lot of preparation. I say a lot of affirmations daily. I always have. Um, from the time I first started channeling, I started to do um, affirmations from the I am materials, the St. Germain um, I am materials. Um, so I worked hard at being well. And like I said, it's not easy. There were many times that I'd be driving across town to be with my family and, and tears are streaming down my face and I'm saying affirmations like, I am joyous, I am well, I am happy. And I was far from it. But I just kept saying those affirmations over and over again to shift my focus from my grief to uh, moving forward and to being well. So it's difficult, but it is doable. So I wanna talk a little bit about that. Okay. In a lot of cases, when we turn around and we're dealing with certain kinds of losses, we feel that emotion. Yes. And as women, we're told not to express our emotions. 
to kind of like always kind of be happy and not allow yourself to go through that process. And yeah. I think that's probably, we're not allowed to express our anger. We're not allowed to express our frustration. We're, we're supposed to be the, the strong one that doesn't, you know, they always teach us how to hold our emotions in and learn how to uh, not express them. But that's probably from where I sit, that's physically damaging to our physical body. Oh, very I much know. so. I'm a prime example of that. I mean, you, I gave myself, you know, giant ulcers from keeping everything in, from not showing my emotions. So I had to learn how to cry and I had to learn how to grieve. And by doing so, I was on the road to recovery. If I had kept all of that in, I'd be in the hospital, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I, my stomach would be so in such a mess. So um, it's very important to allow those emotions to come through, to flow through you. Um, the trick is not to get lost in those for a prolonged period of time. So, you know, you, you have to decide when enough is enough and then move on, make the decision to be well and move on, but at least honor those uh, emotions as they're moving through you and let them move through you. Very important. Don't keep them locked in your body. Cause they'll be happy to stay there. So, you know? I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the healthy, I'm going to talk to people a little bit about what's healthy in expressing those emotions. You know, I used to sit by myself, if that makes any sense, because I don't like, I, I, I have this, I want to say image of myself that I don't like to cry in front of others. So oh, one yes, of my I... ways of releasing energy was, you know, is to allow that energy to flow through me and to sit by myself and actually cry and allow that energy to be released. You know, tears okay. are a way of you releasing those energies out of your physical being. It's a way of okay. just allowing that energy to flow through. And the other aspect, which you really touched base on, was the depression aspect of it. Yes. You know, the sadness that we feel, the stories that we tell ourselves, what our ego tells us in our head of what we should have, could have, may have done better, may have done differently. Those are the unhealthy aspects of sitting in that state of depression. So part of that is learning how to not allow your ego to put you into that dark space. Allow well, that's yourself been to feel and grieve, but not stay in that dark space of beating right. yourself up. And that's where affirmations can help because it helps you to um, shift your focus from a, ne a negative feeling to a more positive feeling. Even if you start out with just the words before the feeling starts, it's, it helps to redirect your mindset and your perception. So that can help you move out of that energy. So what are some of the things that you talk a little bit about the affirmations that you say? Well, there's a set of affirmations that I say every day and I've been saying them for 30 years. Um, and they go like this. I am the ascension in the light. I am the pure mind of God. I am the omnipresent, limitless supply of God's riches and opulence in my use. Uh, I, through the intelligence and beauty, which I am, I command you, K-Horn, to take a perfect beauty of form. For you are that beauty never saw which you are composed. You shall become radiantly healthy and beautiful in every way, form, uh, word, and action. So that's just some of them that I say every day. I also like the ones that say, I am the resurrection and life of my perfect health. I am the resurrection and life of my limitless supply of energy and strength. I am the resurrection and life of my limitless supply of money and every good thing. I am the resurrection and life of my divine plan fulfilled. That pretty much covers a lot of things. So I like those four also. And I just use those to redirect. Anytime I'm frightened or afraid, and maybe in the middle of the night I have a nightmare, I go right to that one. I am the ascension and the light, which means I am the awareness and the knowledge. So, so some of the ones that I have used, especially, uh, you know, I, I want to say probably my biggest move that I, I made was I was probably 26 years old and I literally moved to Philadelphia. I packed up, 
my daughter who happened to be about five at that time. I had a job offer in Philadelphia. Um, I worked in the banking industry. So New Orleans was going through that oil crunch of the 1980s. So there were a lot of savings and loans that were going out of business. So there were not a lot of job opportunities for me in New Orleans. An opportunity presented itself for me to move across the country and move into Philadelphia. I'm moving there by myself with no real relatives, no real friends, starting over with a daughter. So that was probably one of my uh, biggest jump out there and kind of do it type moments and, and make that move. So the affirmations, you know, that I always use is I always felt like I was guided. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to my angels and my guides. And when I needed anything, I would just turn around and focus. And when I would think I'm not strong enough to do this. You know, there's, there've been time, there would be times during that time period where I said, Oh my God, what have I done? You know, I'm not strong enough to handle this on my own. being a single mom. And I turn around and I would tell myself, I would say, you have the power to create whatever it is that you need to create in your life. You have the power to step forward. You have Absolutely. the power to be able to manifest what it is that you need to manifest and start moving forward with um, manifesting. And what would end up happening is doors would open up for me. And this is the like magic. thing that changed in my life when I would change things was my thought patterns you know, what I was actually creating for my, my life. And when money would get tight, which it did at very many times, it would get tight in my life. And what would end up happening is I would turn around and say, it's time for me to make a shift. I would end up manifesting another job that would just magically, someone would pick up the phone and call me. They had this opportunity and I would just turn around and be able to manifest as other jobs for myself to be able to take care of myself and my daughter. Perfect. Yes. It's all in your thoughts and your ideas and how, and if you can use emotion, belief without fear, that makes it all the much stronger and it helps you to manifest that much quicker. So that's a perfect way of bringing to you whatever you, you need and you want and you desire. So let's talk a little bit because one of the, one of the items that you have here, which is really, really important, I'm going to say for mothers um, who have kids or for grandkids or for people in your life is honoring soul choices. Oh, yes. That's really <laughs> difficult. You don't ever, being a mother especially, um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to that, is that you, you're, you know, you have this little baby and you raise it up and you think you always know best and then something happens and they have their own uh, ideas of how they should live their life, regardless of if it's safe and well for them. And sometimes you just have to respect that that's their sole choice to have that experience. Um, it's really, really difficult to even um, acknowledge that or accept that it took me a long time. And it was after the passing of my uh, grandchild uh, that I really realized how important that is, um, especially to watch my son and his family go through this loss with their baby boy it was just heartbreaking for everyone. Um, so it's, it's so important that you understand that those uh, children that you have been gifted with and your loved ones, or even your spouses and, and your parents, everyone in your life, it, they have their own soul agenda. You barely know what yours are and you sure don't know anybody else's is. So just to honor that and say, okay, try to do the best you can for them and try to help enlighten them as much as possible without you know beating them over the head with a thought or idea to allow for them to um, experience what they came here to experience. It's very difficult. It's like a fine line to walk. How do you know when what you've said to them is too strong or too much or not enough? It's, it's, it's always a, a balance. So to um, when you speak to them, if you could do that with an open heart, if you can remember to open your heart to their heart, and sometimes you're estranged from your loved ones. And so it's a really um, good thing to do to have to see yourself standing in your mind's eye, standing in front of them, 
and to see your heart energy go into their heart energy, coming out their forehead into yours, and see that energy circulating. And you can see both of you wrapped in pink light and just say to them that you love them, you care for them, and all those nice things that you uh, pray for them and that you wish them nothing but the best. And that way, you're, it's a twofold exercise and that you feel like you are doing something when you're not really able to uh, perhaps be in front of them in the physical. And you're, you're starting to hold space for them. You're honoring their choices while expressing your concern and your love for them. So that's a very powerful tool that I've used several times uh, when I've accidentally hurt somebody's feelings and I didn't mean to. When I spoke out of turn, I would use, my guides gave me this exercise one time when I really upset someone I definitely didn't mean to. And I used this process several times in those cases. And it's made all the difference in the world. Like the people involved with me didn't even recognize that we had a problem. So um, it's a very powerful exercise to do that. It's, a, it's very worthwhile for both parties. Um, even if you're really mad at someone, you can still um, tell them that you love them and you care for them in that way. And they'll feel it. It'll make a difference. It's a fun exercise, actually, to see what the results could be, if nothing else. I want to say that sometimes our generation is a little bit um, more lenient at working with our kids than, let's say, our mother's generation. Definitely. It, it feels like... It feels <laughs> like that we came from that generation where mothers wanted to put their daughters in the state of terror to make them <laughs> the right thing because they wanted to protect them. And at the same time, it feels like that that may have peeled away at their self-esteem a little bit at a time. And that I know from my own personal experience, I really had to work hard at finding out who I was you know, and finding where that balance is with me personally, because it's like, I felt like I could never do anything right in um, my parents' eyes. Right. And that carries over into everything else that you do. Mm -hmm. So your self-esteem is very important. The other aspect of it is we wanted to not put our daughters through that or our sons through that. We did not want them to experience that loss of their self-esteem, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. You know? And at the same time, there is a difference between tough love and sometimes that's more about, from where I sat, I felt it was better for me to step away and allow um, those closest to me to learn their lessons, if that makes any sense, and not sure. try to make choices for them. You know, to try to, at one point, especially when it came to my daughter, I wanted to make those choices for her because I didn't mm -hmm. want her to make any mistakes that's going to affect her life in a negative way. But at the same time, what that does is that takes that learning experience away from them. Sometimes you have to fall in order to be able to pick yourself back up. And those, those lessons help you actually move forward in your life. That's very true. And sometimes that... Um, can backfire on you later on when they'll say, oh, you didn't care enough to help me mm -hmm. at that time, you know? So once again, it's that fine line again, you know, it, sometimes it's like wa watching a train wreck. You can't do anything to stop that train, no matter what you do. So you just have to let it go and fall for where it will, and then just be there to pick up the pieces. And that's also a, an immense, um, showing of love and affection when you're there for someone to help them pick up the pieces and to restart. And I find that, you know, there's been many times I call it let go and let God. Yes. You know, it's, it's been those times that I turn around and said, well, wait a minute. I'm really, I could feel my energy is being pulled into a situation where mm -hmm. I'm trying to control that situation. And sometimes I take a step back and I kind of release it, and I'll, I allow God to take over. I will turn it over to my angels and say, hey, help me make the, you know, the best choice in this situation, or I turn it over to you to help you fix this for me. Right, so what you're doing is you're allowing your higher consciousness to take over. Um, and it usually knows much better, not usually, it always knows mm -hmm. much better um, how to um, affect a, a situation in a positive manner. 
without harm to, to all parties. Um, we, we don't always know that, you know, we right. are products of our environments, like you said, of our parents and our own experiences. And so that's where our ego comes in, our fears come in. And, and that's not always a good thing. I mean, you need to be fearful enough to run away from a bear, but <laughs> not in, in other situations, you know, and we don't run from bears very often. So um, that ego is still there helping us to, to run away. When it's, it's harder to stay and to be measured and to be calm and to not allow our emotions to override, um, our fears to override uh, the situation. So most women are caretakers. So one, one of the items that you and I talked about, about really that being really important to cover here is you know, honoring, I want to say honoring yourself when you're taking care of others. Right. It mostly falls to, I'm going to say, women to take care of their parents during their waning years. Yes. You know, actually show up for them on a regular basis. But in a lot mm -hmm. of cases, it's really hard to find that balance between doing too much and not doing enough for yourself. That's right. I always remember the airlines, they had the best uh, slogan go and, you know, they say, put on your own um, air mask before you put on that of your child next to you, because if you're not there, your child doesn't stand a chance. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So that's the same way your inner child. So you have to take care of yourself. And once again, that's a fine balance with uh, aging parents. Uh, you'll find that I know with mine, I found that I became the parent of them, mm -hmm. which is different and odd and and you don't think should ever happen plus in a lot of instances you are watching them you know pass a little bit more and more every day their life force is is really becoming diluted every day that you watch them so you're watching them pass every day that was the case with my mother mm -hmm. so um you know i've experienced yeah, several ways. The slow kind where you're watching them pass away a little bit more every day or the very quick kind. Both ways suck. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a good way to experience loss. It's just trying to move through it um, with grace. Um, and, and grace can mean a lot of things. Grace, I think, is another word with ease. Mm -hmm. That's not easy to do when you're emotionally distraught. So it's um once again that's where it's important to let those emotions uh run through you and it's really really important like you say to take care of yourself so what does that mean what does it mean to take care of yourself if you're in a, a stressful situation uh to me that means that i need to take time to relax i need to at least schedule in an hour by myself um an hour to just you know um, have a bath or a shower or and sometimes we don't even take time to do that if we're taking care of other people but it's really really necessary to let your energies um, slow down and to pause and if you can steal your mind for 15 minutes only 15 minutes it will refresh and recharge you like no other way just uh, focus on a white wall if nothing else and try to keep all thoughts from your mind. It will make a, a really great deal of difference in how you feel and mainly how you react to situations and to others' emotions. That way you can stay calm and balanced within yourself, which we all know that we react to other people. They react to our energy. We react to theirs. And so if you can stay balanced, it will help them to stay balanced. And so you're the one that's in control of that. You have control over how you react to things and how balanced you are. So take that time to relax. Take that time to take a breath. Take that time to be away from them for a few hours if you need to. Um, you have to take care of yourself first. I think, you know, part of it is it's like um, my mom went very quickly you know, mm -hmm. from the time she was, she was diagnosed to when she passed away was less than two weeks. So it was oh, kind of yeah. like, boom, it was just, it was really fast. I look at that grieving process through that process. And it's, I always felt like my mom was always a caregiver. I have a feeling she didn't know how to receive. So in her, yeah. her mind, I'm going to deteriorate. I'm going to, I'm going to go down really fast. So I'm going to check out really fast. Yeah. You know, so that's what it felt like when it was her. But when you have that shock of that person's there and that person's not there, 
And, you know, in, in my case, it was like, I didn't get a chance to really get to New Orleans in time. She literally passed away 10 minutes before I got there. So I never really felt like, well, I can't say that. Being metaphysical, I felt like I had closure in a different way, if that makes any sense. Uh -huh. you know, Not some of the information that I received was, or that I, I received from her through a lot of the mediums that worked with me was, you know, when I landed, it was like, okay, Joy's here to take care of everything. I can go. <laughs> yeah. So it felt yeah. like, you know, I, I didn't, I could have beat myself up for not doing something, but chose not to. Well, very good. That's excellent of you to take that path because there's, there's several paths you could have taken, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I, you know, our loved ones don't want us to suffer. No. I'm sure your mother wouldn't have wanted you to suffer and to not be well. So, um, she would want you to take care of yourself too, but especially as women, we're taught to put others first. Uh, and sometimes you do have to do that when you're taking care of children. You right. know, because definitely their safety comes first, but um, you still need to take time for yourself so that you're there for your children, so that you don't overreact in situations, and so that you can stay more calmed and balanced when dealing with them. Um, but, you know, Joy, there's all different kinds of losses, like now especially, other than just death. There's like, uh, say for instance, um, for the example that you gave when you left uh, New Orleans, mm -hmm. you were leaving a, um, a home life and an environment and people that you knew and loved and who loved you. So you were leaving a way of life. So that's a loss in itself also. Mm -hmm. Although you're going to something new, you still, you know, were was attached to that kind of environment. So that's a kind of loss. And any kind of uh, loss that we have um, with our jobs, now we're all in kind of a sense of loss. We're having to do things differently. We have a, a loss concerning our freedoms that we feel, mm -hmm. um, what we can do, uh, we feel. Once again, um, I found myself in this time at one time being upset because I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. So I found myself focusing on what I couldn't do instead of what I could do. Right. So that's, it's really uh, important to shift your focus and to understand that there's all different kinds of losses and um, difficult situation cause us to, um, if you can get to this point, to want something different, to want something more positive to occur. So that, and that way you're manifesting something new and something positive in your life. It may take a while to get to it, but if you keep on, that's why the affirmations will help. So there's all different kinds of losses. There's also kind, you know, fear has a way of just taking control of this as well, especially right. when it becomes something out of your control. I'm mm -hmm. sure people are fearful about their, their futures and you know, the economy and everything else that kind of comes along with their jobs. What is their, what does their new life look like? What kind of people are, you know, there's this fear that other people are in control of, of your personal decisions that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And right. instead of looking at it as, okay, I have this opportunity right now to reinvent myself. Mm -hmm. I have this opportunity to reinvent my situation. How can I reinvent myself, reinvent my business, reinvent my um, my decision and if you're stuck at home for a, a month and a half or, or for two months how many classes did you take how many <laughs> opportunities did you look at how many uh, what did you do in order to say okay what happens if my world really what happens if our world really changes in a dramatic way what are we doing that we can do in order to make that shift in order to make that change I know from me personally, you know, I have a retail store where people walk in the front door and they buy things. But on top of that, I have events that go on and classes and workshops that people come in and they take those classes and those workshops. And I have to look at that and go, well, wait a minute, what if I can't do this anymore? What if right. that fact really goes away? And that's kind of like why we're doing what we're doing now exactly. with these classes and workshops. I turn around and said, well, how do I take 
what we did in the store and transmute that or, or transition that into something different where we can learn how to connect in a, in a different way, where we can learn how to express ourselves in a different way. And sometimes it's a lot easier in, in person than it is online per se, but you do get your message across. You do have the ability to share and we have the ability to share so much more. One of the items that I learned from our virtual fair, I mean, we do a fair once a month. We have healers, we have UK that come in and actually paint for people. Um, we have different readers that do mediumship to row different aspects. And what I noticed is we started to get people from outside the Texas area. You know, people yeah. are calling in that we're starting to, I see where it's expanding and more of a broader, where people are from all over, again, different cities that are starting to plug into us that they hadn't plugged in before. Um, we're touching people even from a merchandise perspective. Everything that I did pre uh, previously was really located, you know, to the Louisville area. And, you know, my products are now starting to get out there in Washington and California and North Carolina. I'm starting to see people from all over, you know, the United States that are starting to purchase from what we're doing. And it's kind of cool to see how it's expanding. It is. It is. It's exciting and new and scary. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a whole new world just about, or at least a newer world than what we're used to experiencing before. So we're learning to use the tools that we have, the technology that we have that for me, I went to very, I wanted to do this and I talked about doing this, but I didn't want to take the time to do it. And now I have the time to do this. So this is what the direction we're going is. So it's just learning how to deal with things in a newer way. Same way, you know, it all goes back to the, the learning how to shift your focus and to shift your perceptions and to figure out what is the truth and what is the illusion. Um, of our world. Um, there's so much information that'll scare the bejeebies out of you all day, every day, you know, if you take time to listen to it. But you have to, you know, like you said, let go, let God, mm -hmm. or let go and just relax enough to bring through your own inner guidance. And it will be there for you, for everyone, not just people like you and I, but everyone has this within right. them. Yeah. They have the ability to connect to other people. In fact, you know, to talk a little bit about this online stuff, I had just, an, a, I'm gonna say a remarkable experience um, last night. I had a friend of mine who had a 60th birthday that was in Sacramento, California, and his, his partner, his life partner, um, his husband decided that, hey, let's do something online for his 60th birthday and let all these people kind of jump in. And he put this video together about his life. So all of us jumped online and we're celebrating, you know, his 60th birthday and connecting. It is really How a, fun. It's a fun experience. It really is a fun experience because he had people from all over the United States that were kind of plugged in at that point where we got to share that moment with him and what he meant to us and what, you know, he, you know, what he meant to us and also what we meant to him and just how, you know, he connected with these people from all over the place. And it was really a cool experience. I think we're learning that video and video chat is, I feel it's making our world smaller, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Right, we can we can all be world travelers now, can't we? <laughs> we can do it in our pajamas if we want. <laughs> yeah, we can take people with us. <laughs> take people with us, yeah. We don't ever have to be alone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have you elaborate a little bit about one of the items that we talked about is holding space for your loved ones. Yes, because that's probably the most important thing. You know, I call that the period where we surrender to the higher powers and ask them to help in a situation. Very true. Uh, once again, when you feel like you're at a loss and you can't do anything for someone who's suffering and you just care for them so much, you just feel the need to just do something. It's very easy to do um, to see yourself 
see them with you, as I mentioned earlier, with a circulating energy from your heart to theirs, to see you embracing them and holding them. Prayer is another good way to hold um, someone's energy. See them being well in your mind's eye. Um, we don't necessarily think to use our brains in that way, but that energetic connection is very, very important and it is very viable and very useful in helping you understand your, um, your powers of connection and, and to allow them to feel um, the, if you want to do it in a way, see an angel come to them wrapped in the strong wings of love and support and comfort. Um, see them being happy. See yourself embracing them if you want to. S just see in your mind's eye, see that heart energy reaching out to them. Embrace them in your mind's eye and hone that space. Pray for them, pray for yourself, pray for the well-being of our world. You can hold space for anybody and anything. You can hold it for a situation, for a person, for the world, for our environment, and um, anything. You just don't understand how powerful your energies really are and how just we take for granted our thoughts. Mm -hmm. To use those in a in a focused, intentional manner is extremely powerful. Talk about magic, that's one of the strongest forms of magic that there is. Um, you can connect to anybody and anything, anywhere, anytime, past, present, future. To hold that space is to, is to show your affection and your love for them without judgment, to allow them to um, process but to hold them with comfort and peace and calm and joy and love will really make a difference in their lives and yours also because you're part of that energy. As you're giving out, you receive from um, all kinds of sources. So that's one of the greatest um, secrets that we have within us is that we have the power to um to hold space for people especially those that we love you can do that for a present loved ones and past loved ones because we're sure that they're doing that for us so use your power understand that um it's very um um it helps sustain our world and our lives so it's very very important so i want to talk a little bit more about holding space for other people um, part of it is, it's like when we have someone that we really love and, and, and someone, uh, and they're going down some sort of a destructive path, mm -hmm. you can't change that situation. No matter how strong you are and how much lecturing you do or how much talking that you do, you actually can't change that no matter how hard you try, because that's a path that someone else is going down. And we have all been in, I don't want to say toxic relationships, but we've all had those toxic relationships where they're out of balance. You know, right. where it's almost like you're giving 100% or you feel like you're giving 100% and the other person is not meeting you um, at any, any place in that situation. Right. Mm -hmm. so let's talk a little bit. There's nothing wrong with disconnecting from that relationship right. physically and yeah. still hold that space for it to change if that makes any sense or hold that space for them to change or to send them unconditional love yeah. um, from a se from a separated perspective you don't necessarily need to be um trying to fix it for them and we have imbalances in a lot of our relationships, especially when it comes to our love interests, especially when it comes to uh, those relationships that we have with, with other people. It feels like sometimes we attract people to ourselves. If you're a giver and you like giving 100%, balance in that relationship is, is to attract to yourself a 100% taker. Yes. Because yeah. you have not set those boundaries of mm -hmm. what's acceptable and what's not acceptable to you. Right. And so it's, it's part of loving yourself. To disconnect, to disconnect from that relationship, but yet hold that space, reset those boundaries. And right. I've had many people that I've spoken to, I'm going to say over the past you know, 15 years, when we talk about those types of relationships 
And I, I will tell that person, it is time for you to honor and love yourself first. Absolutely. Well, what's acceptable for you and what isn't? And if it's no longer acceptable for you, then it's time for you to disconnect from that particular relationship. But you don't have to do it in an angry or, you know, like I call it that all ending way that most people end relationship. There's nothing wrong with saying, I have outgrown this at this time. I am right. a new person. I may have been an, very empathic. I may have attracted uh, takers to me, but I'm deciding to create balance in my life at this time. So I'm going to have that 50-50 relationship. Now, I tell people, I said, don't be surprised when you set those boundaries. Doesn't necessarily mean you're ending that relationship. You have now reestablished that this is what you want in your life. And there's also that possibility that that relationship that you're in comes more into balance. Right. It allows you to redefine what you're expecting of yourself and of others. So you, you're allowing yourself to refocus and to really decide what it is and how you want to be treated. Um, so um, you're well within uh, your freedoms and rights as a, as a creative um, energy mm -hmm. to create for yourself what you want. You don't have to take anything from anybody. You're free, you have the right and freedom to express yourself in a loving manner, and that means loving yourself. So that includes setting boundaries um, within a relationship, all kinds of relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you can detach. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, effort, you know, and you, sometimes we fly fish with things, you know, because we have great hope that that person is gonna change. And um, I think, once again, we're talking about balance here. We're talking about knowing when you've given them the tools that they need to change in some way and they're just not doing it. Well, you know that they're not ever going to change, so it's in your best and efforts uh, and interest to move on to a different location. Whether it's in your mind or physically or however it is, you just don't need to, to be there because they've decided they're going to be the way they are. So you know, just let them go and move on. And, and that's okay. Not everybody wants to be fixed. So right. Once again, right. that's allowing them to have their own um, soul uh, mission. And maybe that's, that's their soul mission is to have this horrible experience. And we just don't know. So you have to know when to stop trying to fix people and to allow yourself to be calm and balanced and move on without them. And I want to touch base a little bit with emotions because a lot of people that walk in that I interact with, and I'm sure that you interact with, are empaths. And right. let's talk a little bit about what is an empath. An empath is someone that it's their beginning of their psychic abilities. They have a tendency of picking up on other people's emotions and calling it their own per se, because all of a sudden they feel something that they don't understand where it's coming from. Right. You're plugging into other people's emotions. That is, I mean, we're all psychic. We're all empathic on a certain level. I call it, we like to feel things. So what we do is we feel everything that's kind of going on around us and you can pick up on other people's emotions. So I want to give a little tools about how do you know if this is your emotion or this is someone else's emotion? And I tell someone, if nothing has really changed in your life, if nothing has spiraled kind of out of control and you wake up and you're in a great mood, all of a sudden you're interacting with about five or six people and all of a sudden you're, 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 you're sad or you think this person doesn't like you or you pick up on some sort of negative emotion or you feel depressed or you feel overwhelmed or the energy you know, is, is overwhelming or you feel angry and you're all of a sudden picking up and why am I angry? Nothing has really changed in my life for me to be angry at the, this moment. There's a good possibility you're an empath. You've picked up on other people's energy. It's not right. your energy. And there's a simple trick that I tell people. You can tell your angels and guides or your guidance and you can say, if this energy is not mine, send it away. If this energy is not mine, send it away. If this energy is not mine, send it away. And what you'll notice in that moment is you'll start to feel better. Right. And that's showing you that what happens is you end up picking up on other people's energy around you. Um, a lot of people are, are in, the, in the midst of this 
in their households. I mean, one, yeah. one of the, with what's going on right now is, you know, there's uncertainty. You know, one of the pe group of people that I probably have the most um, empathy for at this particular time are the seniors that have graduated. You know, oh, yes. you that they've graduated and they're not able to have their prom, they're not able to have their graduation parties, they're not able to, you know, celebrate right. that milestone in their particular life yeah. happening at this particular time. Right. And that's eating away at their parents, at their friends, at them. Exactly. Yeah. Difficult times for everyone, not just for those that aren't working, but for all different uh, states of being, you know, from children staying home with their parents 24-7, 365. We're not used to so much closeness, you know, at all. <laughs> you know, even your dog gets on your nerves after a while, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> if he's a rowdy little dog. <laughs> so it's just um, adapting and uh, learning what's yours. Once again, you can do that as a perfectly... Um, example of how to let go of energies that aren't yours. Once again, just as I said before, still in your mind for 15 minutes, that will release some of those energies that you're feeling. It will recharge your own inner energy so that they can come forth. But that's a perfect way to let it go. And it is difficult, especially in this time, uh, because of mass media and your friends, and your limitations. We think we have limitations because mm -hmm. we can't do what we used to do. So it seems limiting, right? Um, so exactly to, uh, it's hard not to feel all those things going on around us, you know? I'm I, I I say my affirmations, I do my meditations, and then once in a while it still hits me upside the head, you know? So um, then I have to go, then I have to remember, oh yeah, I don't have any reason to feel like this, so I have to clear my energies to become mm -hmm. more calm and balanced. But understanding that you have the ability to do that can make all the difference in your life, yours and those around you. I think the other aspect of, of this is like, you know, I was talking to someone who was self-employed and who has their own business. I have my own business. We were kind of chit-chatting and mm -hmm. I turn around and she said, and, and she said something to me. She says, I don't think I've worked so hard in my whole entire life as I worked for this. Oh, no. And I told her, I said, I feel the same way. <laughs> it's like everyone has had this sort of like, everyone thinks that everyone's on vacation, but it, you know, part of it is, it's like when you have to turn your whole business around or you have to rethink how you do things, it's like you're really going out there and you're just trying to change things as fast as you possibly can. So you end up spending a lot more time doing a lot more than you previously have. And At least you're thinking a lot more. It's like, take some time for yourself. It's like mm -hmm. forcing yourself to unplug for a little bit and take some time for yourself. To relax yes mm -hmm. so what I'm gonna do is I know I have everyone kind of muted I am going to unmute all we do have some people in the chat room and what I'm gonna do is if anyone has any questions by all means you go ahead and ask any questions if you don't Kay and I will continue so I'm gonna unmute all now just so you guys know if you have background noises Okay, so all of our participants have been unmuted. Does anyone have any questions? I guess we don't have people that have any questions, Kay. They're awfully quiet, aren't they? They are awfully quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so we will keep going. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can also type, type it into the chat and we will answer that as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit. We talked a lot about, you know, holding space for your loved ones. We talked about death. Let's talk about conflict between um, relationships. You know, our love interests that are in that are in our life. I mean, at this particular juncture, we're spending more time with our significant other for those that have a significant other in, in the household. And let's just talk about, you know, uh, how do you handle those changes? Well, then once again, it all comes down to taking care of yourself and taking that little break from those energies and to realizing what your energies and what somebody else's energies. And so trying to stay balanced and calm so that your reactions are not knee jerk when they're getting on your nerves. You know, what used to be endearing can 
become aggravating, you know, in a short period of time. Um, so once again, it's being balanced and calm in yourself so that you can react in a calm, balanced manner to them. So they're reacting in response to you um, in a calm, balanced manner. So, um, you know, it helps if everybody has their own space. If got to go outside if everybody's in the house, you know, send them outside, you be in the house. It's just pick a spot and try to have some peace and quiet for a while. That, that helps me with mine. And I don't pay a close attention to what they're saying all the time. So, you know, sometimes you just let it, gotta let it go. It's like, okay, just let them talk. And just, you know, it's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and move on. That seems to work in my relationship. So I don't know. I don't live with someone who's very demanding, so it works for us. You know, pick it up. I've had the same thing. It's like, it's like, you know, it's, I don't, I don't live with anyone who's very demanding either. And, and, you know, I can turn around and say, Hey, I have to go do this webinar. I don't go on the TV set. And he goes, okay. You know, or like, I had that experience very to easy going and kind of very flexible with what's going on in mm -hmm. our day to day life. And I, we've actually spent a lot more time together that we, didn't seem like we had time to do with, you know, he runs his own business. I run my business. You know, he's at home all day. I'm, I'm off, you know, or I'm off. I go off traveling the world. <laughs> <laughs> Via the internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> but in a lot of cases when, when uh, things are busy, I, I'm on the road a good bit of the times. So I go down to Houston and Austin and, and New Orleans and I travel and I do, you know, my origin photography and then support mm -hmm. sponsor other people during that time frame. And, you know, I've done that before. And it's kind of like, it seems like, you know, that, that I'm gone most of the time. So it's like, we've just, we've spent more time together than we've ever spent before. Right. So you're really getting to know each other again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, it's just um, understanding that everyone needs their space, I think, once in a while and taking the time to uh, relax and to, to be peaceful within yourself um, and to, um, you know, not react to somebody else's um, uh, strong emotions and strong feelings, um, you know, unless it's absolutely warranted. So once again, pick your battles, mm -hmm. try to stay calm and focused, be peaceful. So what I'm going to do is let you talk a little bit. You have a workshop that's coming up next week, correct? And talk a little bit about what you do, Kay, and how people can get in touch with you. Right. Uh, well, um, I offer soul paintings, you know, what I described before, abstract representations of your soul energy with written channel messages and psychic readings. We can do that uh, via FaceTime or uh, through Zoom, whatever works best. Um, I also offer a soul signature, which is a symbol that is in, in uh, that represents your personal soul energy. And it's an emblem that you can use in meditation to focus upon connecting with your own higher self and your own um, personal guidance. Um, next week, I will be offering um, a open gallery um, event uh, featuring the my um, guides, the Brotherhood of Light, um, which are of the Archangel Uriel consciousness. Uh, so um, that will be open gallery style so anyone can ask questions. Um, we'll be focusing on different subjects throughout the evening. So um, I've been uh, channeling uh, these guides for 30 years now and um, the information they've provided me is invaluable. As a matter of fact, they're the ones that um, provided me the information on how to for uh, move forward in my life with the, um, with the soul paintings. They told me exactly how to do it. Um, and yours was the first shop that I walked into because your shop is right down the street from me. So um, that's where I started out. You gave me my, my start. So I'm very uh, thankful for the opportunity that you're providing me for the Uriel consciousness to spread its love and light throughout um, humanity during this time of evolution. Um, so humanity is going through an immense evolutionary process. We're just at the front door. We're walking through the threshold. We're figuring out how to do this. And we're uh, learning to set the tone 
tone for um, the next thousand years of consciousness, conscious awareness, to try to uh, and learn how to um, immerse and um, immerse our mind, body, and soul energies together in a cohesive package without separation. So um, that's the message that the Uriel Consciousness has to impart, how to do that in a graceful, kind, uh, loving manner for, for yourself and others. So that's what we'll be focusing on. So I invite everyone to, to come and to uh, provide questions and they'll be happy to hear from you and to share their consciousness and their energies with you. They also provide healing energy whenever they speak. So um, they heal me and they can um, help others feel um, energized and uplifted with their energy. So I'm very excited about the opportunity. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of the webinars that are coming up this week. And uh, we have more that's coming up uh, later on in the month. Um, I actually have, well, Robin will be fil uh, finishing off her, her healing series, which is Wednesday night. Um, we have these webinars on mojwebinars.com and that's mojwebinars.com. Um, she's been, uh, Robin's been doing some healing uh, webinars out there. And on Thursday, we will have Terry Groom, who is going to host her channeling class. And that's really for those that want to really connect and learn how to channel. Uh, Friday night, which would be, uh, I'm going to say this coming Friday, uh, Seon will be holding a, a channeling gallery as well with Malachite. And I think it's, 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 gonna, it's learning how to deal with the, the chaos. That's uh, always fun to hear from Malachi. <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. Always entertaining. Hosting that. We have some other classes that are coming up. I have um, Michael Running Bear, who's going to be hosting uh, some classes as well on Tarot and numerology and shamanism and things of that nature. And uh, he's going to be hosting some classes. Uh, we are looking about getting some people back starting towards around the middle or end of June, um, back into the store, doing some different classes and workshops. Um, Wonderful. Also, I'm working with Chuck to do his paranormal series. We're going to make it a series where we're going to do online classes with Chuck Murphy. And I'm also working with a lady that is out of, I believe it's Portland, Oregon. Uh, she was supposed to come into the store at the end of this month. She will be my next metaphysical chat. And her name is Ann Moore. And she's just going to be hosting a class that's talking about now you're awake and what are the next steps about being awake and touching on some of those aspects of being awake and what are some of the steps that you can do in order to develop yourself. Great. So with, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for joining me and joining Kay and myself. Thank you. I know that this went out on Facebook Live. I cannot see that chat. I promise you guys, if you have any questions out there, Kay and I will jump in and answer any of those questions that you may have uh, typed into the, the live chat on Facebook. Um, we're doing this through Zoom, so we're not really able to see that. We're only able to see what's going on in the Zoom platform. So with that being said, I am so excited. Thank you, Kay, for joining me. If you Thank guys you. have any questions, you can contact me on miraclesofjoy.net. Um, my name is Joy Koff. You can also find me on Facebook. So thank you for joining us today and thank you for Kay for, for supporting me and this metaphysical chats. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Until next time. Yes.